praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see you all. Uh, and it's wonderful at this time we are meeting in such a time where all this chaos is going on in this world. Can I firstly say that Jesus is coming soon? The rapture is imminent. Uh, we have to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And the church, which is the bride of Christ, has to be prepared, a lamp full of oil before he comes back for us. Uh, and I believe the world events show us that it is indeed fulfilling the biblical prophecies of the soon and coming King. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 19. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 is the call of Elisha. Elijah goes over, throws a coat over him. I'll just quickly read from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. And he says, so Elijah went from there and found Elijah son of Zaphath, and he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. And he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen, ran after Elijah, said, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I'll come with you. Go back, Elijah replied, what I have done to you. So Elijah Elisha left him, went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people. And they ate. And he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that you will bless this word. And the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be holy and acceptable in your sight. Amen. Uh, I just thank the Lord for this word because we find that Elijah gave up everything. He was very strategic, if you know what I mean. Uh, I want to talk about how we need to remove ourselves from a life of maintenance and move ourselves into a life of production. Hallelujah. God has not called us to maintain ourselves. If you look in the book of Acts, we all know Acts chapter 2, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why were the disciples baptized? It was an awesome experience. It was a great experience. The Holy Spirit came, empowered the whole room, fell upon each and every person. They spoke in an unknown tongue. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples were not to keep them maintained in the upper room. They were baptized to be sent. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. They were baptized to be empowered and sent to the world out there so that they will recognize and realize the power of the living God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. They were baptized and empowered for ministry. Do you know all those who were seated in this chat room you're not church members you are disciples hallelujah there is no such thing as church members there's only disciples hallelujah the new testament commandment is that we go and preach the gospel to every nation to every creature to every person baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit that is the new testament church i failed to realize that many years of my life and i was trying to maintain myself and my church so much until one day god said this is a time of production not a time of maintenance it's time to release people into the kingdom of god to claim the mountains like caleb's hallelujah to pronounce a blessing to bring souls into the kingdom of god amen it's, it's like an example we, I can see is like between a garage and between uh, a car factory. A uh, garage is a place of maintenance. When you have repairs, you go there. When you do, want to do some work, you, you take it to a garage. But when you come to a factory production, when you come to a car production, the factory produces cars, new cars, new cars each day, and is sent and released. And I believe that's what God spoke over our life when we were in Habercroft. And now we are ascending church. Hallelujah. We train, we equip, 
we empower and we release people. It is not for personal glory. It is not for the name and the glory of the church, but it is for definitely for the glory of God and for the extension of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we, we come to this word and we look that, uh, at uh, uh, Elijah. And Elijah, what, what did Elisha do? Elisha, he burned. He was strategic. He understood that there was a point if he was disappointed, he could go back to his oxen and plow. But we find that Elijah, he burned his oxen and he burned his plow. Because he knew that whatever disappointments, whatever frustration, whatever um, upsetting things happens in his life, in his road and response to God, there will be no room for him to come back to the place where he started. Hallelujah. Amen. I think God is calling the church to be just like that. We need to burn things that need to burn. We need to stop focusing on the materialistic kind of a setup and a maintaining kind of a setup in our life. And we need to call on to the power of God to produce something for his kingdom. The fruit of the spirit is love, is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the spirit. We need to produce the fruit of the spirit. When we live this life, and when we are put in a place like this, especially in Britain, we are put here not for our own maintenance and not for our own benefit. You are put to be a voice to the people who are lost. You are put here for a reason. God says in his word in Jeremiah 29, 11, he has plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. And I asked God that question when I was attacked. I, was, I asked that question when I was in poverty. I asked that question to God why these things had happened because the word prosperity in his language doesn't just talk about money he talks about the our identity you see when we talk about grace i believe we are all saved by grace amen but grace does not give us any room to say we are going to have a beautiful and wonderful end hallelujah sometimes the end of our journey can be disastrous it can be bad. We are seeing a lot of things happening in this world right now. If you look at the story of Jesus or even John the Baptist, we find that John the Baptist was born through a song of Zechariah. Uh, God intervened and shut the mouth of Zechariah because he disbelieved God. Uh, and, and in the end, when John the Baptist was born, God opened wondrously his mouth and he sang a song to the Lord for what the Lord has done. Only to see that grace brought John the Baptist to an end. How was his end? He was beheaded for the gospel. We find Jesus, the son of God, uh, journeying in this, in this manner, with, uh, in the plan of his father on earth. And, and we find even Jesus anointed, prophesied from the Old Testament, fulfilled in the New Testament. And, and prayed over, and, and even when he was born in, in, his, in, in his mother's womb, uh, John the Baptist jumped with joy in Elizabeth's uh, womb. He jumped with joy. There was an instant reaction in the spirit. No, 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 there was the baptism of the Holy Spirit where the dove came down and descended, and the voice from heaven said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. We see the power of Jesus manifest through healing, signs, wonders, miracles, raising the dead, healing the blind. Yet we find, according to man's eyes, the end, the grace that brought the end of Jesus was not to our taste. Hallelujah. Not to our plans. Jesus said that. God said that. Our plans are not your, my plans are not your plans, and my ways are not your ways. Hallelujah. Sometimes we plan and desire such an outcome. We try to maintain uh, 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 a kind of, can I say this humbly, uh, a kind of hypocrisy that tries to uh, make ourselves holier than thou. And then the, the sad state is that 
we are not producing anything. We are just maintaining something. And God wants to put everything aside, burn everything aside, and he wants us to step forward, hallelujah, and he wants to start producing what the kingdom of God is, is calling for his people, hallelujah. We find that Jesus was crucified, and on the third day he rose from the grave, hallelujah. And because of that, we are saved. We look at the disciples of Jesus, hallelujah. Everybody had a wonderful call, a miraculous call, a, a, a supernatural call of God over their lives. They did mighty things for God. They established churches. They did signs and wonders. But each of them had a disastrous end. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Amen. God is encouraging the church. He is charging the church. And the signs of the time show that we need to lay down our life for the gospel. Hallelujah. We need to lay down our life for the gospel. Can I say that again? We need to lay down our life for the gospel. Hallelujah. It is time we've got to put aside all the other yokes and all the other oxen. It's time we just burn them, put them away, and follow through the call of God. Hallelujah. Yesterday I was doing a funeral. And while I was doing that burial, uh, the burial site, I was saying to the people out there who, who did not know God, I said, listen. You've been living all your life trying to maintain and trying to uh, survive until the last breath. But let me tell you, you want to produce something, then you can produce by accepting Jesus in your life. You can produce because when God comes in you, the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. The Bible says, you know, in such a manner that he has sent his Holy Spirit to envelop you. Do you know when he means envelop? You put a letter in an envelope. He envelops you. He, 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 he surrounds you. He, he immerse. You know, I love it when the Holy Spirit moves. I love to worship. Me and my wife, we lead worship in our church. And do you know, we spend hours in worship. And I mean hours. Sometimes we start at 10 o'clock and finish at 2 o'clock because we can't stop worshiping God in the spirit and our church folks don't leave they're not upset <laughs> they just go on on their knees on their uh, on the floor just crying out to god for the move of god in their lives because enough is enough folks we need to stop maintenance and start producing for god's kingdom hallelujah amen i just want to encourage you folks just to follow the call of elisha hallelujah burn everything Burn everything. Burn everything. Don't get, don't make any opportunity to go back to where you first started. Hallelujah. That's the step of faith. Amen. The step of faith is amazing because for us, most of us, uh, step of faith is not a step of faith because we can see where we are going. We have planned it. We have purposed it. We have produced it ourselves and maintained it ourselves. But suddenly, maybe I believe tonight, maybe God wants you to surrender to his will and to his plan so God can release you, hallelujah, into his will, into his plan, into his design. Amen? Elijah, I love it about Elijah because at the end of the day, he started as a servant of Elijah and he became the son of Elijah. Hallelujah, the spiritual son of Elijah. Because he followed the call. Elijah saw the commitment, the call, the, the resolve. Uh, the Elijah understood that Elijah was not doing this for his own glory. He was doing it for the glory of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Amen. Folks, we need to put aside everything that is a stumbling block. We've got to put aside every distraction. Amen. Uh, let me tell you about the times that are happening, whether you agree with me or not. Let me say, this is not a problem of racism. This is not the problem of the color of the skin. Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem that the Bible tells is wickedness. Hallelujah. It's wickedness. It's been there from the Old Testament. It's been there in the New Testament. And it's been there even today. It's wickedness. It's not about white or black or brown. No, it is about wickedness. And God wants to sweep his glory upon his church. 
and renew his bride with the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants to anoint and robe his bride with the adorning robes of righteousness, not our own. Because the Bible says our robes are like filthy rags. Hallelujah. Our robe of righteousness is like filthy rags. We need to take it off and ask the Holy Spirit to robe us and to keep us and to help us produce. Maybe what you might ask the question, Pastor, what do you mean by producing? You can produce the fruit of God's Spirit. You can produce by speaking to your neighbor, to your friend, to those around you about Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you produce just like Apostle Peter did? <laughs> Hallelujah. In a shadow, people got healed. Do you know, God has not just called the fivefold ministry, uh, those who are in fivefold ministry, he's called the church to be his bride. Can I hear an amen? Hey, you know, how does a bride function? A bride functions uh, in such a manner, it gives glory or the bride gives glory to the bridegroom. Amen. It's not just the leaders. It's not just the pastors. It's not just the apostles or the prophets or the teachers, or the evangelists. It's the church in whole. We got to be a voice in the desert. We got to be ready to lose our head for it. Hallelujah. If I can put it bluntly. We got to lose our head for it. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to encourage the church. Let's start the fire again. Let's renew our focus again. Hallelujah. Let's focus on the call of God again. Hallelujah. We find that Abraham, he maintained himself until God called him. In Genesis 12, he responded, left everything and followed the call of God. We find Moses, hallelujah, was maintaining his status in Egypt as the prince, but he had to leave that maintenance and leave and go into the desert to produce something powerful that God had invested in him and so did elisha he left everything for the call of god so that he can produce the fruit of righteousness hallelujah can i encourage my brothers and sisters and even the children i know the young ones are out there the young ones listen your main focus is not just your education it's not just anything else it is the gospel of jesus christ hallelujah you are the young generation that God can invest fire, that God can ingest, uh, in, in, invest the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks every yoke. Young people, you have a voice in this society. Hallelujah. You have a, trans, I believe, I call this a transition phase. The younger generation are empowered to transition into a place of production. Hallelujah. I'm not putting down the older generation. I believe we all have a chance to change. Hallelujah. From maintaining ourselves, that, but to produce what is of God. But can I encourage young people out there, even the worship leaders and all those who young ones I see on the screen. Can I tell you, invest into the kingdom. Call out to God. Commit yourself for God. Burn away the things that needs burning away. And you will never come back to it again once you follow the call of God. And let me tell you, you just need to trust God in your walk with God. Hallelujah. No one needs to control you. No one needs to tell you what to do, what not to do. There is one, and his name is Counselor. He is our Counselor. He is our Comfort. His name is the Holy Spirit. When you are baptized by fire, I believe, that we are not called to walk ankle deep or knee deep or waist deep. We are called to be fully immersed in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Just like in baptism. Baptism means full immersion, fully immersed. And I believe that we as a people of God need to be fully immersed in God's Spirit and function and produce what God's spirit produces. It's different from planting and maintaining a tree. Maintaining a tree is different from producing fruit. Hallelujah. We can be a tree without fruit and still be maintained. 
Amen. But it's time we produce fruit. A man shall be known by his fruit, the Bible says. Hallelujah. So we need to start producing fruit. We need to come together as a church once again and say, listen, God, we are surrendering to you right now. We are surrendering to you, Lord. And God is looking and he's saying, how are you going to surrender? Lord, I'm going to burn away my security. I'm going to burn away my comfort zone. I'm going to burn away all that I'm clinging to. If this does not work, you know, sometimes we as Indians, we have a system in place. If this does not work, we have something to go back to. Hallelujah. Amen. If this does not work, we have something to go back to. I think the, the going back to has to be burned right now. We got to come to a place of helplessness. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Helplessness. Because the only dependence we, we will have is on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The only dependence we will have is on God and his divine plan. My God has not given us a skin covenant. He has given us a blood covenant. Hallelujah. And the blood of Jesus can break every chain, release every captive, and bring to unity everything that has been disconnected. Hallelujah. You know what happens when banks flood, when rivers flood? There is no control. There is no order. The Holy Spirit will engulf the church in such a manner, says the Lord of hosts. I just declare this blessing and I declare this blessing upon each and every person in this room. I pray that God will empower, that God will once again open our eyes to see that we are not alone. We have the promise of the Holy Spirit that we do not have to fear Hallelujah, because the spirit of the Lord will empower us. He will protect us. He will charge us and he will give us the words that we need to speak. He will direct our call where there needs blind eyes to open. There he will minister through us. Where there needs lame people to be healed. Hallelujah, he will minister and release through us. We have nothing to fear. I pray a blessing upon the church right now in the name of Jesus and God's people said amen.